and who is Jesus Christ? Because some among us believe that Jesus is an angel. Some among us believe that Jesus uh, is a theory. And there are some that believe that heaven and hell are in the mind. Come rain, come sunshine. Switch my heart and do you will find. It's love for you. All I got is love for you. You're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays right here on YouTube, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. For those of you that love audio podcasts, when you're driving, cooking, bathing, cleaning, and whatever you do when you listen to audio podcast. So today is Friday, the Friday show, which is Bible Talks. Every Friday we do Bible Talks. We discuss uh subjects from the bible and today we're doing the same thing we're discussing who jesus is if you watched bible talks last week we discussed the doctrine of righteousness and i explained saying that the doctrine of righteousness is an elementary teaching once you get into the kingdom of god you see jesus said unless a man be born again he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he also said, unless, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I explained how that when you are born again, you enter the kingdom of God, which means you become a citizen of two kingdoms, of the kingdom of the earth and the kingdom of God. And the Bible also says you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. So when you're born again, you begin to experience because seeing has a lot to do with your perception. Um, the Bible says we do not move by sensory perception, but by faith. So the Bible does acknowledge that we have perceptions. And the Bible in the book of Hebrews also says that strong meat is for them that have, by reason of use, exercise their senses to discern both good and and evil. So our spirits have senses and our spirits are able to perceive and our soul is able to perceive. Our body is also able to perceive. So when you enter into the kingdom of God, you must begin to see the kingdom of God. Yes. And today we are discussing Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Did I tell you guys to subscribe? Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. So this is a big question. Even in Christendom, there are people who call themselves Christian, uh, Christians and don't fully understand uh, this question, who is Jesus Christ? Because some among us believe that Jesus is an angel. Some among us believe that Jesus uh, is a theory. And there are some that believe that heaven and hell are in the mind. So how exactly do we explain who this Jesus Christ is in order for people to receive him because the Bible says to them that received him, he gave the right to become children of God. So are we all children of God? No, we aren't. We're all God's creation. We're all made in God's image and likeness, but we're not God's children unless we receive Jesus Christ. All right. So getting into who Jesus Christ is, I'll read you the first scripture that it gives an explanation to the origin of this man we call Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. I like this scripture because it further breaks down Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot this one, and this one begot that one. Um, and it, it explains all the way to David and David uh, all the way to Joseph. So they are about 32 generations in total between Abraham and Jesus Christ. Because God had promised Abraham that through you and through your seed shall all nations be blessed. And so this seed, Jesus Christ, had to come through the genealogy of Abraham. And the Bible also refers to Jesus in many places as the son of David. Now, there's, a, there's an angle I would like you to view Jesus in, a perspective I would like you to have when you think of Jesus for today. Jesus Christ is a man, okay? He's a man. Um, as a matter of fact, the Bible refers to him. He refers to himself as the son of man. Now, who is this man 
that Jesus is the son of. The Bible in the book of Genesis says, and God created man in his image and likeness, and he called them Adam. Male and female, he created them and he called them Adam. So man is referred to in a plural sense, even though this man was given a name, Adam. So when we talk about Jesus being the son of man, it's because Jesus is the son of Adam. Now, you will notice also that Jesus did not have an earthly father in the natural sense where man, woman meet and produce a child. No, but Jesus came through a woman. Now, this woman, Mary, came from people before her, right? And when you trace it back all the way, all these people came from inside Adam. Now, Adam was a man alone in the garden and God created Eve from his side. God made Eve from his side. So Adam had humanity inside of him. He had the entire human race. You know, when God looks at human beings, he's not looking at it from our perspective because we are on the earth. So when we look at it, we look at it from uh, this angle, east, west, uh, you know, our compass directions. We don't look at it uh, from upwards or downwards. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. But when God looks at man, he looks at a race that he created. This is not the first race that God is creating. Remember, there are angels, there are different groups and classes of angels and angelic races. And even before man on the earth, there was a race. So when God looks at man, he looks at a race that he made that started as one man. There was one man and the rest came out of him. So when Eve came out of Adam, uh, Adam called her Eve because she would be the mother of all creation, right? And God later came down to Eve and not to Adam saying, your seed, because Jesus was to come through a woman without a man's involvement because the man had already been involved in the beginning, Adam. So Jesus is the son of Adam in that sense. And that's why he's referred to as the son of man. But in order for us to, to, to understand fully where Jesus Christ came from and how his history is broken down, the Bible tells us here that this is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ and it begins to break down generations in order to get to Joseph, who was the father of Jesus in the sense that he was the husband to Mary. And Joseph was a direct descendant of, of David. And when you study your history where you also realize that Mary was a direct descendant of David and Abraham. Yeah. So Jesus Christ is a man. Let us look at a few more scriptures. Mark 6 verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not these, are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Now, this was a time when Jesus Christ was preaching and ministering in the city where he came from. And the people there were offended because they said, how can this man speak like this? We know him. He's a carpenter. We know his brothers because Jesus Christ had brothers and sisters. He had four brothers, two sisters. So Jesus actually came from a home, a family. It's not like Jesus was a peculiar person growing up in the sense of miracle working or that there was anything special. Jesus Christ was a human being like you and I. He had the same experiences. He was subject to his parents. Let me show you scripture. Um, Luke 2 verse 51. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Now, this was a time when they had traveled to a different city. And when they were coming back uh, to, to, to Nazareth, where Jesus came from, they realized that they had left Jesus. So when they went back for him, they found him in the, uh, in the temple, among us, the, 
the people that were there and he was asking questions and contributing and he was only 12 years old. And so they asked him, Jesus, why would you do this? Why would you make us this worried? Because Jesus was a child, just like you would lose your child if you go to the showgrounds. Do you guys remember that people used to get lost when they got to the showgrounds? Did you ever experience that? Were you ever lost at showgrounds? If you were, you can leave it in the comments. But anyway, Jesus Christ, they assumed he was lost. And the Bible says when they got him and he explained saying I was about my father's business, this tells us that Jesus was aware right from his childhood of who he was. And uh, this is why the Bible here says that Mary kept these things in her heart because it it resonated with, that, with, with what Gabriel, the angel, told her. That your son shall be called Jesus, for he shall be the savior of his people. And the spirit of the most high God shall cover you and you shall conceive, right? So all this began to make sense to her. Now, the Bible here, the, the interesting part I want you to, 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 to see in this scripture is that he was subject unto them. So Jesus Christ was subject to his parents. He obeyed the rules of the house. He, his father, Joseph, was a carpenter, and Jesus also learned the craft of the house. He learned from his father how to be a carpenter, and Jesus also dwelt with his brothers and sisters up until a time came when he had to leave and start his ministry. And at the age of 30, Jesus began his ministry. And I know there are many stories about how Jesus may have been performing miracles at home. How did Mary know that he would perform the miracle of wine and what have you? Let's look at this scripture. John chapter 2 verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Now, this miracle that Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee at a wedding where he was invited with his disciples and his mother was a matron there. So Jesus Christ turned water into wine. And the Bible says this was the beginning of Jesus' miracles. This was the first miracle that Jesus had done. And as, as a matter of fact, before he did that miracle, he actually said to his mother, woman, what does this have to do with me? My time has not yet come. So Jesus had a specific time when his ministry was to start and when the miracles were to start. But prior to that, Jesus was to be a normal human being like us because Jesus was to be subject to like passions just as you and I are. Uh, Jesus was to be subject to temptation. He was to be subject to hunger. He was to be subject to sleep. He was to be subject to hatred. He was to be subject to gossip. He was to be subject to all the things that you and I experienced growing up up until the age we are at today. Jesus was to be subject to all this. So Jesus was a Jewish boy who grew up into a Jewish man. And even the Jews today will tell you that there was a man that existed whose name was Jesus. Jesus really was a person. Now, I would like you to imagine this young man, this 30-year-old man, speaking to you and telling you that he is the son of God. And as a matter of fact, speaking to you, telling you that he is God himself. This 30-year-old man forgiving the sins of people that he finds in the streets. This young man, 30 year old man telling you that unless you drink my blood and eat of my body, you will not have a part of me. And this 30 year old man telling you that he is the way to God. He had the audacity to refer to God as his father. No one ever referred to God as their father before him. Wow. No wonder they crucified this Jesus. No wonder they called him a heretic. Till this day, when you go to Israel, there are Jews that believe that man was a false prophet. He was a heretic because he was a man like you and I. He was born through a woman. He was breastfed. He was raised and subject to his parents. He had brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ was a man just like you and me. I would like that to sink in. I would like that to sink in. Jesus was a man, 
Imagine any 30 year old man, any 31 year old, 32 year old, 33 year old man that you know. They're not old. Some of them look really young. I would like you to process that. Think of that for a while. Jesus was a young man. At the time he died and rose again, he was only 33. So think of a 33 year old man, a young man, vibrant, joyful, excited all the time. <laughs> Isn't God good? Isn't God good? So this is one side of Jesus that many people don't really understand. That Jesus Christ was actually a man like you and I. And when we begin to read his words in the scriptures, all that he said, all that he taught, all that the disciples encountered, you should understand that this was a normal man, a 30-year-old, a 31-year-old, a 32-year-old, 33-year-old until he was killed. So when the whole nation was crying, crucify him, crucify him, this was a 33-year-old man. This was a young man, a 33-year-old man standing in front of the whole nation and they're shouting, crucify him. They were not shouting for a 40-year-old man or a 50-year-old man. They were not shouting for a man with a special stature or someone who had anything special about him. No, this was a man with whom was the likeness of men. There was nothing special about him. When you look at him, he wasn't the most handsome of them all. The Bible describes King Saul in the, in the, in the Old Testament as the tallest among them all, and he was handsome. But this wasn't the description of Jesus. Jesus was an ordinary man, an everyday person. If you met him today, there would be nothing special about him. Yet there was this side to him. Let me show it to you. 1 Timothy 3.16 and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Now, here's the interesting thing about God. The Bible says God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Jesus saw it fit to come to the earth as a normal human being with nothing special about him. As a matter of fact, it was this very thing that made the Jews not believe that he was who he said he was because the Jews believed in a mighty king that was coming to liberate them from the Roman Empire. Yet this Messiah came as a baby born in the most humbling ways. They couldn't find a place for his mother to give birth and so they had to resort to a manger. I want you to think of to think of this critically. When Jesus was being born, they were looking for an inn or what you may call a, a, a motel. They were looking for a motel. They were looking for a, a place where they could, she could give birth. And they couldn't find one. And so they had to resort to a manger. You know, childbearing can be an emergency <laughs> when a woman is in labor. Her water has broken and she just wants the baby to come out. And so they said, okay, 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 let's create some space here in a manger. And he was born. Now, some of you may think there was something special about it, like Joseph and Mary were divinely inspired to take him to be born in a manger. No, it was, circum it was highly circumstantial. They didn't want for it to be that way. As a matter of fact, it must have broken Joseph's heart to see his wife giving birth in a manger. So he was born in the most humbling of situations. As if that wasn't enough, the government of that day, King Herod, declared that all children under the age of two were to be killed. Now imagine, take for example, you're watching me from, from the Republic of Zambia. You give birth to a baby this year, and the president says all children from two and below are going to be killed. How would that make you feel? So Jesus Christ went through threatening situations, real life. They're not just stories written in a book. They were real life threatening situations. Yet through that all, God preserved him. God kept him. 
until his time had come. I like how the Bible says, and they got him and wanted to stone him to death, but they could not for his time had not yet come. There were many times they attempted to kill Jesus because they said, how could you, a simple man, equate yourself to God? So Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is a son of man. He's a man like you and I. As a matter of fact, when he ascended to heaven, he was still a man like you and I. And when he descends, we are looking forward to seeing a 33-year-old man in the clouds who is returning for his church. And he will return after seven years, after having raptured his church, to rule the world for a thousand years as a 33-year-old man. So who is Jesus? Jesus is a son of man, son of God. God manifested in the flesh. The Bible says if, any, if anyone tells you that Jesus did not come in the flesh, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Jesus, son of man, son of God. God manifested in the flesh. Seen of angels. This was when angels saw God. The angels were like, oh, how? That's God? <laughs> no wonder the Bible says angels long to look into these things. Wait, that's God? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. Leave it in the comments if you're learning something. And bye for now. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.